Good morning, guys. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Evil 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 9 a.m. You can also check us out on YouTube at Calvary Chapel Inland. You can see all our devils there. Also, our Sunday morning messages and our Wednesday evening Old Testament messages. If you're in the neighborhood, like to come by and join us, check us out. A little church on the move. We are at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. And today, if you'll bring, take out your Bible, get a highlighter pencil, cup of coffee, and join us for about 30 minutes. We will be in the book of Ephesians, and we'll be starting with chapter 1. Let's go ahead and, and pray. Oh, gracious Father, we just come before you, Lord. We, we sit in awe of who you are, Lord, and your faithfulness. Lord, truly, we are, we are in the midst of a spiritual decline, Lord. It seems that the Spirit has been quenched by our nation, Father. And it continues to become secular more and more every day, Lord. And we need a revival, Father. I'm not sure if we're there yet and how much further we have to get before you intervene and send your spirit in a powerful way like you have in the past. And who it is that you will raise up, who will be the next Billy Graham, the next Chuck Smith, Lord, that will take uh, their place in history and be a part of revival that just touches the hearts of those today right where they're at lord somebody that we won't know personally um, somebody that we may disagree with in the beginning but lord your spirit would take a hold of them and do a great work lord i pray lord for faithfulness for our little church lord we're in the storm of what's going on around us and we seem to be be that little speck, Father, on the side that's just trying to be faithful, Father, with what you have given to us. Uh, we're not trying to make splash splashes and draw attention and claim to be anything, but Lord, just humbly saying thank you for what you have given us, Lord. And we just continue to pray that souls would be saved here, Father, as we reach the unreachable, Father, those that are without or those that are barely hanging on, Lord. We pray for them, Father. We lift them up to you, Lord. And we pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I guess I could have kept, kept going there on a roll in prayer. We're in Ephesians. We'll be looking at chapter 1. All of you that are joining us uh, this morning, let me see all one of you. Okay. So let me give you some background here to this great little letter that Paul writes to the Ephesian church. In fact, verse one says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. But it also says, and faithful in Christ Jesus. So, so not only to the church in Ephesus, but any believer that has been faithful to the Lord, that desires to be used by him for his glory, to be faithful to the scriptures, uh, faithful to walk in his ways. So this little book, some have considered it and called it the combat manual. And we see that in chapter 6, where Paul talks about putting on the armor of God. It's a book of war and warfare. And I'll tell you what, right now the way I feel, I feel like I've been in a war. And I don't know who hasn't been in a war. You can go back to the Old Testament and ask Joshua, have you been in a war, Joshua? Oh, you better believe I've been in some wars. Ask Moses. You know, ask Moses if he's been in some wars. Ask King David if he's been in some wars. Um, yeah, we've been through some wars and nothing's changed. We're still at war today with the enemy, with spiritual things uh, that attack us. I'm going to predict something here. I'm not saying I'm a prophet. There are plenty of people out there who claim to be prophets and they go live on Facebook and pretend to prophesy about things. But I'm just going to get out there and say this, and I've been saying it for a while, and we're going to see more of it, and we're starting to see it now. But this push 
for now pedophilers to be received as normal mm. people. Um, I'm already seeing it on Facebook uh, several uh, different uh, personalities, uh, ones that are famous and others that are not so necessarily famous publicly but are wealthy and well known are already coming out and talking about how it's normal, that we should accept it, it's the way of life and so forth. And we're gonna see more and more of this and we're gonna see that P added to the L, L B, J, you know, T, transgender uh, group and they're gonna continue to grow in numbers. And that's really a sign that we're in a warfare right now, in a big warfare. Barn, Barnes uh, came out with a, a survey they have been questioning uh, people throughout the United States and they're finding that we're more secular than ever before. That we are no longer a Christian nation and that there are no longer Christians in the majority of people in our country, but it's turned secular. So once that happens, there is no hunger for spirituality, for truth, for God, for Christianity. And in fact, it's gonna turn around where they're gonna literally start attacking us as Christians, uh, a lady who uh, Pacific Justice Institute is defending right now, uh, she was evicted from her home because she was a Christian. The manager said, we don't want Christianity here, we don't want it taught here and witnessing here, and so we want you out. And then he made that same statement to uh, her son because she was an elderly lady. Uh, she just came out of the hospital. She just dealt with, some, uh, with a, a stroke. And this guy says, I don't care, that's none of my business, you need to get out. And so they're handling that. So we're gonna start seeing these kind of attacks on the Christian church. Um, we're, in a, we're in a warfare, and this, what, that's what this book is about. Uh, it's parallel to Joshua. If, if you really read it, along with Joshua, uh, you'll see that uh, Joshua <clears throat> talks about crossing over to the promised land and the conquest, the, uh, that uh, a taking of possession and trying to keep uh, or trying to conquer what the enemy has taken uh, from God's people. Uh, this is Paul's third mission journey. Uh, this is where he met the elders of Ephesus and he warned them about the dangers uh, they would face. And we see it in Acts chapter 20 and he starts his journey in Acts chapter 19 uh, to the Ephesian church where he stays for three three years uh, riding uh, uh, with them, I'm sorry, staying three years with them and then riding from Rome to them after the fact. So let's go ahead and, and get into this. The first three chapters are very clear that Paul is talking about our relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, and all that God has done for us. And then the next three chapters deals with that battle that I was talking about. So let's uh, be encouraged in this first chapter here. As I read verse one now, verse two says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's always the heart of the Apostle Paul for the believers back then is that God's grace and peace would come upon them. Grace means favor, that God would have favor upon the things that they do, that everything they touch, everything that they walk towards would be a blessing, not just to themselves, but to others and that that would come and bring peace to their lives. I was talking with someone the other day and um, they, they asked me, uh, what, is my, what is my goal? What is my, what is my life <clears throat> purpose? And I said, to serve. It's to serve. I have, I have this desire, actually not even a desire, it's just an anointing from God that I serve. I don't know why, but I will always help instead of take help. And the person said, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> it's hard to give you anything, uh, but you are always giving. Yeah, and I don't expect it back, and it just comes so so naturally. Uh, maybe it has to do with the fact I can't say no. <laughs> but that is my, my purpose, to, to serve. And that service actually brings peace. You know, when I serve somebody and I hear... Uh, their testimony and, and what has happened in their lives or how the Lord has touched them or, or moved them or strengthened them, whatever, whatever blessings comes to their life. And I, 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 not that I tell myself that, but I get a peace that, wow, God is working in their lives, you know, and I got to be a, a part of that. Not that I'm anyone special and that I deserve that. It's just a part of, of reaping what I'm sowing in my service to them. 
And so there's a peace that comes with the work of God in our lives. Now he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I wish he would have listed those blessings, right? I mean, it would have been nice. Give us an itemized statement here, Paul, of what the blessings are so we know. I mean, he, he makes it very general here, statement that all of the spirit, with, with every spiritual blessing uh, he has blessed us with. So whatever we have need of, I think that God gives it to us and it's a blessing. So our salvation is a blessing. But these blessings are spiritual blessings and they come from Christ in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Wow, isn't that amazing? Before the foundations of the world, before you were even conceived, before your parents were, before your great, great, before Adam and Eve were conceived, he already chose you. That's a plan. He chose you to do great things. He didn't choose you to sit around and do nothing. He chose you for a purpose. I don't think we really grasp that idea. We really don't. We think playing video games is our purpose 24-7. Let's just play video games. I like video games. I have a little, little game on my phone. It's called Field Runner. And once in a while, if I'm sitting in the doctor's office or whatever, I'll, I'll pull it up. And it's just little guys trying to get from point A to point B. And I kill them before they get there. <laughs> you know? And it's just a little game. But that's not my purpose, is to play this game all day long, every day. There's another purpose God has called us to. He predestined us to do something. And oftentimes... Well, let me just put it this way. Not as often, but there are those servants that realize that purpose. And even in the midst of their pain and their own personal sufferings, their limitations, their handicaps, their chronic illnesses, they know that purpose and they still fulfill it to the best of their ability. And God fills in the gaps. So before the foundations of the world, guys, God chose you. He didn't choose you to get married and have children. The world does that. He didn't choose you to just have a job and provide and a retirement. The world does that. He chose you to do something outside of that, something spiritual, something significant in the kingdom of God. That's a question that you have to answer. You can't not be satisfied with your daily living. You have to fulfill the calling that God has for you in your life. Uh, and it's not to go to school and better yourself. It's to go to school and better yourself for the kingdom of God. And we miss that point. And maybe that's why we are so, um, <clears throat> why the spirit is so quenched today. is because we're doing things for ourselves and no longer doing them for the kingdom of God. That's a, an awesome statement before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will. So it's according to his will first, and it was according to his pleasure. So God gets pleasure when his children are fulfilling his call. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us acceptable in the beloved. So just in those six verses, we see everything that God has done for us already. It's amazing how much God has done for us if we think about it. But he's not done yet. Look at verse 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood. That's another work of God. Redemption of our very souls have been given to us by the blood of Jesus Christ because of our faith through his grace he has given us forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace, not our grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Now, prudence means understanding. Um, you can have wisdom, but not understand how to use it. So prudence means you understand how to use that wisdom and you apply it to your life. 
<clears throat> having made known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things to Christ or in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. We have inheritance coming to us. Again, who is he writing to? To the church in Ephesus and to the faithful Christians. So those faithful Christians and those in the church here are the ones who are going to inherit the things of God, as he says here, uh, concerning the inheritance that God has for us through our redemption. Then he goes on in verse 15, because there's more. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. So apparently the Ephesian church uh, had faith. They trusted in God and God was using them in a great way, but they also had love. Love is the action and evidence of our faith. <clears throat> because we have faith, <clears throat> we love our brothers in Christ. We serve our brothers in Christ. We think of others more highly than we think of ourselves. And so he was commending the Ephesian church for having that great love. And he goes on and says in verse 16, do not, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceedingly greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. There's six, right? No powers or principalities. Uh, we don't fight against uh, flesh and blood, but against those powers and principalities. We see the work of God and what he has done for us right here. This is the evidence of our salvation is that we have a calling and a hope that God gives to us. I was listening to a little video this morning from an individual, I don't know his name. He shared a little bit of his testimony and he talked about how he was a very successful contractor in the world. Had a million dollar boat, he can cruise all over, cars, houses, <clears throat> retirement, and apparently he made a mistake and they put him in jail for 13 months. Lost everything. Didn't say what that mistake was. But in jail, he found the Bible and he started reading the Bible. Carries it to this day with him always. And when he started reading the Bible, he realized how much Christ has saved him. That he was redeemed from Christ for a purpose and for a hope. So when he got out, he was able to um, become rich again, but this time, the difference, this is what I'm saying, this is the difference. This is the difference, and if you're no different than the world, then you're no different than the world, <laughs> plain and simple. But here's the difference. Now he is on boards to various ministries throughout the world, Christian boards, and doing contraction type of work, construction in these missions out throughout the world. Um, that is now his purpose, and he is doing that now 100% of his time. So a calling, a predestination, God's will will be done. He will bring about what his desires are for you through whatever means he needs to. And, and I just hope that we get, at least in this chapter here, the importance of being involved in church and allowing God then to use you in a great way. Um, 
there is so many opportunities in churches. I don't think uh, there is not a opportunity in a church, any church, whether it's small or whether it's got thousands, there's always an opportunity to do something in that church even bigger and better. That's how churches grow. When one individual decides to say, that's it, I am tired of this world, I am tired of just living for myself, I am tired of not having a purpose and meaning in life, and so I am going for it. And they go to church, they see a need, God calls them and they just start fulfilling it and God then just takes it and moves with it in a great way. And they are humbled by it. They're not prideful by it. They're humbled by the fact that God would use them in that way. And that ministry grows. And if you add 10 of those ministries to a church, that ministry will grow in itself. And as it grows, there will be other opportunities for ministries. It's just amazing. Uh, there can be an elderly ministry in a church. There can be a handicap ministry in a church. There can be a, a ministry to go feed uh, those that are in retirement homes. Uh, there's ministries in reaching out to uh, substance abuse uh, homes that are out in our community that are trying to help those that are dealing with drugs and so forth. There are so many ministries that God would could and would like to use us in. <clears throat> it's just we're not willing to take those steps of faith. <clears throat> I remember it was 2004 that I felt the call to quit work. It was a big step. I had a great job. I worked for Southern California Edison. The last four, four or five years, I was making over $100,000. I can remember bringing, every two weeks, I'd bring a, a paycheck home. I can remember bringing a paycheck uh, that said $10,000. I'd look at it, and it was crazy. I said, I can't believe I, I bring this much home. Um, but God then began to call me into the ministry full time. I couldn't do everything, and at that time, it was just me. And so the hospital visits, the counseling, the, the marriage ceremonies, the ministries, the men's, the couples, and just everything, just couldn't do it all. <clears throat> and I knew that I had to, I had to make a decision. <clears throat> and it was the hardest decision I'd ever have to make. And it's one that sometimes I, and I know it's sin, forgive me, Lord, but so, sometimes I, I look back and say, I never should have done it. Never should have done it, because I have friends that I know of that are now retiring at my age, which is way before retirement, but they've got three, four, five million dollars in stock options. And so um, it's the call of God and what he purposes in your heart that you're going to literally trust him. Because it takes trust, it takes faith to do something Amen. like that. You don't just do it, you know. You're, you're not smart if you do. You gotta make sure that, no, God's involved in this. And if he's involved, then he's going to sustain us uh, in those things. <clears throat> but it's that heart, and my heart's not any different than anyone's heart, but it's that heart that God sees. See, this is how God works. If you have that heart, then he will give you the means. He will meet you where you're at because you have that heart. You'll take the step of faith and wonder if he's going to meet you there or not. Well, he will because you took the step. And every time you take a step, he takes a step before you. And he prepares things so that you can walk in them. So it's really God's work working in you. And we have to take the adventure of faith, right? In those steps that he is uh, predestined for us to take. So let's close up here in verse uh, 22 and 23. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Uh, that word, he puts all things, is a military term, and it means submits all things under his feet. And so everything is submitted under God. There's nothing that happens that happens without his permission. He is working a work in all of us. And so we're all ranked in a sense under him and he is going to work out his work in the fullness of himself in the body of Christ. So praise God. God is good and God is faithful and God has given us every 
God has blessed us with every spiritual gift that we are in need of. And if we just take the step of faith, he will bless us with that gift. Thank you for joining us. If you have any prayer requests, please post them and we'll pray for you as we pray here in a moment. Let's pray and we hope that you'll have a good weekend. If you don't have a church, come join us here at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. We'd love to meet you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We now pray, Lord, that you be with us. Walk among us, Lord. Carry us if you have to today, Lord, through the trials and struggles of this life, Lord. And number our steps, Father, and give us purpose. What is our purpose? Why have you called us? I think every one of us should answer that question. And if it's not answered yet, you should keep seeking to answer. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.